Come on and give God a hand clap tonight. Who is here to believe God tonight? Who is here to believe God in Jesus' name? We thank you right now, God. We thank you. We thank you for working it out. Father God, I pray for those who have joined us on social media, Father God, and out there in the land, Father God, that you caused them to be increased in the mighty name of Jesus. Now allow this word to penetrate their hearts, penetrate their spirit of their minds, O oh Lord God, that they submit to you wholeheartedly, O oh God, that they might see you according to your will in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I am truly excited tonight. I am Pastor David Frederick coming to you from Christ Lit Tabernacle, 1140 Benson Road, Garner, North Carolina, where we are gathered in Jesus' name, that we are here to make a change in Jesus' name. So let's get right into it. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So we are here tonight to give God some praise and honor. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in the midst of us. We thank you right now, God. We thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I believe all that can hear me pretty well. Amen. Amen and amen. Who's expecting God to do something? I'm looking for God to do it at any time. He's already done it. I'm seeing it being manifested according to his will that he get glorified and magnified in everything that we do and we say. Here for Mama, stand on our soapbox for me. Here at Christ the Tabernacle, what it means is that the anointing is to bring life. The anointing is to bring hope. The anointing is to bring change. Christ lit, that means people that know what they're doing because they know their God in Jesus' name. We are going to be dealing this month with a particular subject. I started it on the pastor's desk. If you would go back and visit that when I spoke about it on pastor's desk yesterday, Tuesday. And we're going to deal with that subject so that we can get clarity because I think it's a timely word. I truly think it's a timely word. It's a fitted word for people that are walking in fear, people that are walking in, in destruction, people that are walking in dismay, people that are giving up because of everything that's going on. We need something from God. We need something that God has caused us to be victorious in. And now I will say this to those that are listening out there in social media that, you know, in order to, for this word to mean something, Jesus Christ has to mean something to you. That he is our Lord and our Savior, that because he died for our sins, God has pardoned us so that we might be partakers of his nature, of his character. And what we are here to do is through the word, study for life. Oh, Lord, how much y'all just missed the key word there. Study for our lives. We're here to study for life. That means we are studying the word of God for the life that God has for us on this earth. We're here to study the word of God so that we can find the life that God has for us here on this earth. Let me make myself real clear. Everybody has an opportunity to do whatever they want to. God has permitted that matter of fact. He's allowed that. He's actually impressed upon you to do what you want to do. The problem with it is that we have and we've end up where we are. Where our portion now is sickness, disease, poverty, ignorance, shame, death, hell, and the grave. It's the end result of all that we do. For the lust of the flesh, lust of the heart, l uh, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life brings about death. Amen. When lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And after sin is finished, it brings forth death. That means you're separated from God. Death here means that you are separated from God. You will not have the ability to comprehend who God is. You won't have the ability to acknowledge God. But through Jesus Christ, God has caused us to come back to him. Amen. He's done the work for us through Jesus Christ, through the cross and through his resurrection so that we can and be imparted in his righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. And in that is life. 
Let me say this again. In that is life. When we look for that life, it has nothing to do with what you are, who you were, and what you're capable of doing. This system in which we live in, the scripture call it the world. In this world system, it does not produce life. In this world system that we are a part of, it cannot, it will never be capable of producing life. Here life means God. Does that make any sense? Because only life is in God. There is no darkness in him. There is no lust. There is none of those things. He does not have a respect of person. He doesn't get into personalities. So therefore, he came to give us his life. And he introduced us to that life through Jesus Christ because our lives or our world system or our world of thinking or our way of thinking is coming to an end. Let me say that again. God not only commissioned that it comes to an end, but sin has to end. Let me share with you why. Because when Adam and Eve were in the garden and they decided to do what they wanted to do, they chose to die. Now, it was the love of God that pushed them out of the garden because the garden was inside of the garden was the tree of life also. The scripture says that Jesus said God cast them out or threw them out of the garden unless they partook of the tree of life and live in the state of stupidity or sin for eternity. That's called the mercy of God. I don't know where people got this thing from that, you know, after you get to the point of in the natural and you can't take care of yourself and you are about decaying and you can't even get yourself out of the bed. Somebody's always got to look after you. And even when they look after you, you're still decaying. You're still hurting. You're still in pain. You're still suffering. And it's selfish to hang on to a person that has reached that point. God is not that selfish. And you say, well, how do you know that? Because he commands an end to suffering. Death was the answer to the end of sin. And because of that, it was the end of you. It was the end of us. So now God has given us mercy and grace so that we might be partakers of life. Inside of life is righteousness, joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. Inside of that is health, strength, and prosperity. Inside of that is extremely vivaciousness, meaning that you have a desire to live every moment. You have a desire to enjoy every breath. You have a desire to look at the sunlight, the birds, the trees, enjoy the elements, enjoy what God has created. And because we have walked in that, we don't understand that appreciation. We're decaying every day, so we actually enjoy decaying things. We see that in our diet. We see that in a, we see that in the entertainment that we have. We see that in the things, the kind of jobs that we have. We see that because we keep trying to do something, but we're never accomplishing anything. There's nothing we can do to get life outside of God. So here at Christ Lit, what we do, we have settled in within the word of God, settled within our spirit to street, seek in the scriptures to find out what God has in store for us in his life. That means that God has a plan for them that live for him. Now, living for him means that you got life. Life is contrary to death. Life is contrary to this world. That's why the language is different. That's why the motivation is different. That's why the attitude is different. God said, be ye holy for I'm holy. Therefore, that character is even different. It is nothing in this world that duplicates God outside of his word. So through the word of God, we are here for study for life. That means we're looking into the word of God so that we can find the life that God has in store for us. Amen. For this month, 
like I told my leaders earlier, for this month, we're going to address one of those topics, which is the essential topic, so that we can define what's going on with us now, uh-huh. what's going to go on with us later on, yeah. and what's going to happen in the future. future. Uh-huh. Now, the world won't understand that kind of language because they can't see past death. And if death abides in you, you can't see no further than your hand. And therefore, now, because of that, you don't even love yourself. More or less your enemies or more or less your neighbor or more or less your children. You think you love your children, but if you love your children, you would give them life. If you loved your neighbor, you would give them life. If you loved your enemy, you would give them life. But if you don't have it, you can't give it away. And therefore, everything that you see, you think is decaying. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? That when you see other people, instead of seeing the righteousness of God, or uh, other than um, other than seeing the righteousness of God or life or joy, you are seeing, oh, they are against me or they after me. They want to hurt me. They trying to kill me. Somebody's always after me. And you can't even see your worth, your own worth. So you can't make anybody else valuable in your sight because you don't have any worth in your own sight. Except through arrogance or pride, you know. That produces a higher education. That produces a six-figure job. Or that produces the the nice house on the corner. That produces five cars in the driveway. That produces vacations every other month. That produces those kinds of things. But it can't produce life. So we're going to work with a subject tonight. Hopefully, if God will, this entire month, I have put the coals and fire in place that they are going to work out some of this topic each Wednesday along with me so that we can hopefully define and see what God is doing. Y'all with me? So the topic tonight and for the rest of the month, if the Lord allow for Wednesday night study for life is called Kingdom Citizens. Kingdom citizens. We're going to deal it from the premise of the kingdom of God, but it's in the aspect of you being a part of that kingdom. Y'all with me? So let's help define what a kingdom is, and it helps us to focus on who we should be now. Now. If you don't know what to expect from God, you ain't going to know what to believe God for. Now, let me help you with that. The scripture says he that cometh to God must believe that God is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What that means is, is that if I'm seeking God. To, I'm seeking God, I got to believe already when I'm seeking him that he is God. The word God here is supreme being. There is no wisdom above him. There is no knowledge equal to him. And there's no understanding that goes beyond him. So when I seek God, I'm seeking someone that some about something I don't understand. I don't care who I inquire on this earth about. He's the one that can give me a higher understanding. And for those out there, your young people that's always looking for a higher knowledge, you can find that in him, but you're going to get lost without Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ embodied, he embodied or he walked on this earth as God. So that means that if you're trying to find God, you have something to reference to. Does that make any sense? Which leads me to my topic in which I talked about yesterday. If you go back again and look at the uh, thing at the pastor's desk, I brought this to light. And we're getting ready to look at our scriptures tonight. And where Farrakhan, Louis Farrakhan, made a public statement. I don't normally call people's name out, but you can go look it up. Louis Farrakhan made a statement and said he was employing or bringing to light the law of, um, Jesus, I forgot that quick, retaliation. Thank you. 
the law of retaliation. It is in the Bible and it is in the Quran. You can find it in Deuteronomy. You can find it in Leviticus. And what it means is, is that I'm going to do you to you what you do to me. If you steal from me, I'm going to steal from you. If you lie to me, I'm going to lie to you. If you shoot me, I'm going to shoot you. And he was talking to the younger generation and addressing the younger generation's feelings about what's happening in our society today. That there's a lot of racial discrimination that is going on. And he's telling the young people, do to them what they do to you and feel good about it. Now, when you got influential people, people that can easily influence, people that can be easily manipulated, especially young people, because they haven't lived long enough to know that they can die and not come back. That's right. That's right. Adolescents won't look at death as a thing of death. They look at it as a possibility. No, it's a definite. It's going to occur. And how you act determine when it is going to happen. So he was impressing upon the younger people, well, do to them like they do to you. Because the young people are hit in the streets and they are protesting. And some of them, not, not all of them, listen to me, not all of them. They're, some of them are doing it in a good manner, trying to get their civil rights, trying to make progress in our society of the racial discrimination. Not only our job, but in the political world and the lawmaking, also in the loans and all those kinds of things. So they're trying to address it the best that they can. But they're looking at their fathers of old, such as Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, but not understanding the heart of those gentlemen. They looked at the act and determined that that was something that they must do. And Louis Farrakhan is causing a rush, an emotional rush in these individuals and forcing them into a captivity. What do I mean by that? Is that any time that you are trying to make something happen or force something to happen on someone else, you are doing it to yourself. Amen. What you do to somebody else, you are doing it to yourself. You say, well, pastor, where you get that from? Also, Farrakhan in the Bible, the scripture said, whatever a man soweth, that shall he reap that means if I seek to kill you regardless of what you do to me that's what I deserve why is that because the scripture says again vengeance is mine I will repay saith the Lord because you don't have the capacity within your soul to be just in your acts what does that mean you are not in any position to judge all creation with what you say and what you do. Does that make any sense? Yes. So we are addressing that statement and many other statements from a biblical stance, from a biblical portion, from the aspect kingdom citizens. I am a citizen of the kingdom of of God. And like I said earlier, I do not seek the way the world do things. I do not appropriate or apply the principles in which they put upon me, not the world, because all that's in the world is death. I am seeking to live. So I got to go to somebody who is alive. That is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that gave me access to life. That means to God. So now God is commanding me to live contrary to what is being imposed on me. And I accept it because I don't want to die. Now, death is unfolded in many ways. It can be anger. It can be jealousy. It can be envy. It can be a murder of your tongue, yeah. meaning that you're tearing down a brother or sister unjustly. That means you're bringing out their negativity without God's approval. 
Does that make any sense? And if you misuse the word of God or you use it for your edification, you're still twisting the word like Satan did. So if I am going to do it rightly, I got to do it out of love. Somebody say out of love. love. Which makes me a kingdom citizen. citizen. It ain't that I just believe. It's I have accepted. What did I accept? And y'all going to get this some of it on Sunday morning again. It's that a part of being accepted and accepting God's will in his way. You accept it how he do things. How do I accept it? By doing what he do. Jesus said it this way. I do nothing except I see my father do it. I say nothing except I hear my father say it. What is he saying? That when he read where the scripture says that God make it to rain on the just as well as the unjust. That's what he did. Better statement is, is that overcome evil with good. How did Jesus come to that? Because in Psalms where he read it, he says, son, don't do evil because evil doors will be cut off. Now, let's break that down so that we can deal with our subject tonight. He told he was talking to his son. God is talking to his child. He ain't talking to the devil. He ain't talking to the unbeliever. He's talking to his child. Now, all of those out there and all of you in here, all of you will say that I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Therefore, that makes me a child of God. Now I'm talking to you. You. Don't do evil because evil doors will be cut off. Let me help you. He's not talking to the devil. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to the ones that say that they believe. Because you believe you are his child. So he turns to his children or kingdom citizens and say, don't do like they do because they going to be cut off. Meaning if you do like them, you going to get cut off. To help those along with the statement that Louis Farrakhan and why I address with that because he made a public statement. Go Google it. I ain't got time to Google it for you. Go, go and do all of y'all Googling, whatever y'all Googles out there, what y'all going to do. It's in there. You can look it up. He's, he made a statement. And the only reason, again, I am addressing him because he made a public statement. If he just said it at the coffee table to somebody or talking to himself in the bathroom, I never would have brought it up. But he said that this was his interpretation of the word of God, the Bible, along with the Quran. Uh I will not be a pastor of God if I don't correct the statement. If you can say it publicly, I can bring you up publicly. Does that make any sense? So he like many other pastors, they are co-signing this fighting. They are co-signing this protesting. They are co-signing this thing of trying to kill people or trying to get rid of people or shooting people in the street. So Jesus put it again. He said, he that the killed by the sword will die by the sword. Don't deceive yourself. How you live is how you will die. We see a lot of young, young, our young people dying today. That's because of their parents. And that's because of their parents. And that's because of their parents. And that's because of their parents. Until we finally get to the parent of Adam and Eve. <laughs> Not Adam and Steve. <laughs> but Adam and Eve addressed the will of God by rejecting it. So therefore they're no longer citizens of the kingdom does this make any sense everybody's not saved everybody has has the opportunity of salvation which God has made evidently so we are under grace now I want to make myself real clear therefore it's available to everybody even your enemies 
And because of that, my behavior must reflect that. If I do what my father do, I say what my father say. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall believe him shall not perish, perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16. So now if I believe that, that's how I'm going to treat you. That God has came to save you. I don't care what you do to me. I don't care what you say. I'm going to act like him. I'm going to talk like him. Have I slipped? Yes. The just <laughs> say live by faith. Just fall seven times. That's not an excuse. It's an opportunity for growth. If you have fallen, get up. If you have made a mistake, get up. If you have fallen into sin, get up. This is the time of grace and mercy. So therefore, we're going to look at something tonight, and I believe in my spirit and in my heart that it has never been taught this way in a public form, maybe somewhere in a, you know, in a backwoods in somewhere, some corner somewhere or some bathroom corner, but he told me to shout it on the rooftop. Make it a public spectacle. That's what the gospel is supposed to be. Set up so high that everybody can see it. Christians, it's time to come out of the COVID rooms. Christians, believers, I'm sorry. Believers, time to come out of your COVID hiding. God ain't hiding because it's COVID season. And he hasn't stopped talking. Therefore, I can't hide and I can't stop talking. And I can't stop doing because he ain't stopped doing. Does that make any sense? Now, you heathens or unbelievers, I'm going to make it very clear so nobody won't get no misunderstanding. That doesn't mean that you abuse this or abuse the believer. Because if you touch God's anointed, he will deal with you himself. That's why I have no problem with the statement of Farrakhan or false prophets or men that say that they understand the word of God. I have no problem with that because I don't have to try to get vengeance. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Y'all going to get that one day. There ain't no need of me getting angry. Uh-uh. Right. I'm just telling you where you're wrong. Right. I ain't saying it out of anger. It don't benefit me at all if you like me or dislike me. Yeah. I can't save you. I don't have a heaven to put you in, as old folks say, or a hell to put you in. Right. But it is my responsibility to show you the way. Somebody say to show you the way. Show you the way. Okay, let's look at kingdom citizens, and we're going to look at it from our foundational passage. It's coming out of Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And let's do a little reading. For the sake of groundwork, and I will be taking my time with this, y'all. I will be taking my time. So what you don't get tonight and what you didn't get Wednesday, let me say yesterday from the pastor, the, the uh, pastor's desk, I'm going to ask you to visit us every Wednesday night, if the Lord allow us to be here, to get a continuation of this word. Don't get part thinking you understand all. Right. Don't come and say you know it. You might miss something. A cup that's full ain't got no room for knowledge. So if you feel like you already know it, please just hit us with a like and move on. Share before you go, though. (laughs) Share before you go. Because we're at 1140 Benson Road, Garner, North Carolina, to help those that believe. Somebody said help those that believe. believe. Matthew chapter 24. As we take our time with this subject, I'm going to ask you to please be careful, pay careful attention to the text in which which we read. Uh We're going to read from verse four. Verse four down to verse 12, verse down to verse 14. Now, listen, throughout this teaching, I'm going to cover the entire 
chapter. Okay? If God would allow it. Help me, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. If God would so allow it that we can address what we see in the text. Amen? When I finish reading, we're going to come back and address what the kingdom is. So that we can get clarity of thought. Amen? Amen. It comes out of Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, I should keep reading, but I want to just put this in there. It didn't say that no devil deceive you. It didn't say the Antichrist deceived you. It didn't say any angel deceives you. What did it say? That no man that's equated to creation of people that carry flesh and blood. They have the capacity to dwell on this earth and die. Does that make any sense? I don't want y'all to go to sleep with me on that. I told you I'm going to take my time, but I need you to get this tonight. Because we're going to deal with the season that we come out of, are in, and are going into. Uh Uh I'm going to give you this little spiel real quick. Most prophets that say that they are a prophet, and you can find out they are false prophets if they got a word just for your moment. They oftentimes got some prophecy or got some revelation about what you're going through. They don't know how you got there and they don't know how you're going to get out. But they got a word from God somehow or another about what you're going through. My English teacher, my fifth grade English teacher can do that. All she got to do is watch CNN. Read the daily news. Turn to the right channel and follow you home. She ain't got to prophesy. She can, with that knowledge, she can tell you what you are going through. Amen. I don't understand people when you got to get a word of knowledge about you drink too much. You know you drink too much. Why am I drinking too much and how can I get out of it? Watch the text now so that we can. So we know for a fact that this whole premise or this whole teaching is based on men deceiving you. And we're going to work it up. We're going to work back to it. Now I want us to take our time, though. Help me, Holy Ghost. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many. What many who? Many men. Shall come in my name. Pastors. Saying that they are anointed. Saved people saying that they are anointed. Believers saying that they understand the word of God. People that use the Bible to instruct your life. That's what the text is talking about. He ain't talking about. The world. Do anybody else see something else in there? Because how do I know that? Because he said, watch this, what he said. Many shall come in my name. Saying, I am Christ. The word Christ means anointed. Anointed means that you understand what God is saying. You ain't got to be a prophet. You ain't got to be an apostle. If you are anointed, you are a kingdom citizen. Y'all with me? Help me, Holy Ghost. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Not only, he he said, they're going to come, and they're going to work, and they're going to get their job done. Because many going to follow them. Many deceiving men. Watch the text. 
Verse 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Now, I said I won't do this, but I got to do this a little bit. Let me do this a little bit. Many shall deceive you. And you're going to come into a climate that there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. Most of those deceivers are trying to work on your fear of hearing wars and rumors of wars. Yes, mm-hmm. They're talking to you about something you in. Mm. Jesus is talking about something that has yet happened. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. That's good, sir. Watch what he says. Christ says. <laughs> the anointed one says. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. David, let's work on. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Read the text. Let's just read the text so we can work on. Let's read the text. Let's read the text. For nations shall rise against nation. The word for there is inclusive to all that was just said. It brought together what was just said. Wars and rumors of wars. Now he said nations shall rise against nation. All of it is happening. Some of it happened cohesively, meaning it's happening at the same time. And sometimes it take decades or years and years apart that might have wars and rumors of wars. And they might be fighting over it and they might not be. There's a lot of things that's happening in our earth. But don't allow yourself to be deceived. Because if you can be deceived, it's because you are being troubled. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. They are going to happen. He ain't going to stop them. They are going to to happen he did not put them in motion he's saying he looked in the future and said they are going to come it is necessary for them to come Uh we're getting ready to find out why Uh okay let's read on verse 7 nation shall rise against nations kingdom against kingdom and there shall be what famine and pestilence and earthquakes In diverse places, diverse places means that these things, not just earthquake, oh, Christians of the old day just took the one right before and it said in diverse places, earthquake, that's not what it's talking about. Famines should happen in diverse places. Rumors of war should happen in diverse places. So I would ask then what is diverse places? Places where that type of thing doesn't usually occur. Who ever heard of an earthquake in Ohio or the parts of North Carolina? We are experiencing them. They're getting closer and closer together. They're happening in diverse places. I need you all to stay with me. Let me read on. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. When you see them happening. They are the beginning. Does that sound like it's the end? Now, we're talking about the one that knows the past, the present, and the future. So when he speaks, he's speaking out of God's point of view about what's happening, but he's going to let us know know why it's happening. It ain't that deep. (laughs) Not this. So why are you troubled then? Let's find out. And these things, and these are the beginning of sorrows. The be- I want to write that the beginning of sorrow, the beginning of sorrows, yes. meaning there's going to be a lot more after it. Yes. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I wonder what those are the ones that come in his name falsely. <laughs> Sir. He won't talk about them. Here, he specifically is talking to his disciples. 
because I can show you in the scriptures that how they were hated and persecuted for the things of God. And it's going to happen again. It is relevant to those that believe even now. But here in America, you rarely experience this type of hatred. This type of hatred ain't just talking about you talking about Jesus. They are trying to burn a cross in your yard because you say you believe. Does that make any sense? Yes. Let's not get too far out there because I, I really need to get something and some substance in there. To, oh, bless the Lord. Y'all with it, though? Yes. Verse 10. Do you see this repetitive part of and? Mm-hmm. There's an and in verse 6. Mm-hmm. There's two ands in verse 7. And here go some more ands. You say, why bring that up, Pastor? The word and is a conjunction word. Am I right, English teacher? That means it brings the statements together. One can't exist without the other. Be not deceived by men. And there shall be wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, and these troubles. All of it goes all together. It's one statement. Right. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. What verse am I at? Verse 9. nine. Then shall they deliver you up. I know that's verse 10. Verse 10. And then shall many be, aff- aff- what is it? Offended. I'm sorry. Be offended. Many shall be offended. Let's not keep, let's move on. Many shall be offended and shall what? Betray one another and shall hate one another. Oh, my God. And (laughs) and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. I really want to go there, y'all, but I got to work this slowly. Because, let's do it. And he's given ready to give the reason why. All this is happening. You've been thinking about his climate change. You've been blaming it on your president. You've been blaming it on the devil. I ain't seen no devil in there yet. I ain't seen nothing about, I don't see nothing about no demon yet. But I do see something about a false prophet. I do see something about deceivers or men. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So that we can stay in the context in which we are talking. We're talking about being a kingdom citizen. Let's move on. Verse 10. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I dealt with this on yesterday, but I'm going to give you a little bit more clarity to it. Because of the events that are occurring and because of everybody being in troubled mind because of the events, their love for God is deteriorating. Because of that and because of who they are listening to. Does this make any sense? It's vitally important that we understand the text. Let's not take it out of context. Let's keep it in the frame of, frame of thought and so that we can get the totality of it. We'll break it down later on so that we can adjust our spirit. Y'all with me? Yes. He said, many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. I wish we could talk about that many, but we're going to. In, and because iniquity shall abound, because iniquity shall abound, because sin shall abound, because it is growing constantly, the love of many shall wax cold. But watch this. He now don't use and. The word but cancels out all that is spoken before. But let's deal with it in the right English term so that we can stay in the context of the scripture. The word but doesn't make all that dissipate. 
The word but here is saying there's something else yeah. working. Yeah. 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 There's something working even when all of that is working. Let's get it now. Let's get it. Let's get it. Because this will help you understand the prophecy that he's getting ready to talk about. This ain't the prophecy for the body of Christ. It's what he's going to talk about later on. We're getting ready to get into it. In Jesus' name. We, we ain't. No, we aren't. So that we can understand and stay within the framework of the scripture. This is how you discern rightly the word of God. Listen to me what I'm going to tell you. This is how you discern rightly the word of God. When you don't understand a single passage, you stay in the structure of the passage. You keep it in its right framework. Don't try to pull it out if you don't understand the framework. Does that make any sense? When they was telling me to write my papers, you stay to the subject. And once you complete your paper or body part on the subject, then you come back and interject things in while you're staying in the structure of the subject. The subject is about men deceiving people. It ain't about rumors of wars. It ain't about earthquakes. Because the end result of them deceiving people is sin working. How do I know that? If you stay in the context in which he's talking, that these men are introducing something that's not God. I'm going to get ahead of myself for a minute. And they are releasing all of these things in the earth by running their mouths. Does that make any sense? I'm going to work it, I promise you. It's a lot more deeper than that. It's a lot more deeper than that. Go I'm going to throw this in there because it's about time for us to go. And this is for those out there who are Bible scholars and who love to read the word. Catch this in context for next week. The tongue is a world of iniquity. It's set on the course of fire that comes from hell. That's what the scripture says in James. That means that my tongue brings up the element in which I live. Listen to me now. Because God created the heavens and the earth after his words. His words came from what was in him. So the atmosphere that they are creating is what's in them. Now you got wars, rumors of wars, death, poverty, yes. sickness, plagues. This coronavirus is a plague. It, is. it goes under the Greek ter- Hebrew uh, Greek term plague. Somebody released it out of their mind, out of their mouth. And they got it from a false prophet. Does that make any sense? Yes. I can't go any too further because I got y'all out there. I need, I need y'all to put your life preserver on till next week. But he that shall endureth, but he that shall endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. That's a good place to stop for tonight. That, that means... There's another mixture or another voice or another avenue that's being focused on that can't be seen by the naked eye. Because here he said, the ones that endure it, the reason they're enduring it because they don't agree with it. Called kingdom citizens. I don't agree with injustice. 
I don't agree with slavery. I don't agree, agree with protesting. I don't agree with hating my brothers and my sisters because of the color of their skin. I don't agree with the politics. I don't agree with the Democrats. I don't agree with the Republicans. I don't agree with anything that we are mustering up. I don't agree with it. But God is going to teach me how to endure. Now, let, 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 me, let me put this in there because I don't want y'all to go bamboozled out there in the streets and try to kill somebody and with your mouth and all that kind of stuff. The word endure there is that you got something that's causing you not to become what's out there. Your love will not wax cold. Because you're not doing iniquity. You're not doing sin. You're not doing your own thing. There's only one spirit that can survive this. And that's God. And it is love. The love of many shall wax. And that's why I have a problem with you. That's why I have a problem with you. That's why I think you have a problem with me. That's why I think they have a problem with me. It ain't the color of color of my skin. It's because my love has waxed cold. So I'm going to treat them like they treat me. Because I got approval from Farrakhan. I got cosign. It was already in me to hate. It was already in me to despise. It was already in me to destroy. It was already in me. The sin was already working in me. It leads and guides me. I just needed somebody to assist me with it. I need a false prophet. So now many are being deceived. Because we miss God. But he that endureth shall be saved. The word saved there is not equivalent to the fact that you accept that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. That means you are a kingdom citizen that puts you in a place that God can take care of you through all of these things. Because your attention is not on what they are teaching. We got to stop there. Was it too much more? So we're going to deal with it. We're going to look into it. There's nothing happening in the earth that you haven't approved. Whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loose. Satan just needed somebody to agree with him. God is looking for somebody to agree with him. And those are the ones that's going to endure. They're not going to allow the circumstances to dictate to them how they behave. Because God lives on the inside. Watch what you just said. Because he lives on the inside, he lives according to the kingdom. That's different than accepting salvation. Now you are walking in salvation. Because you're... Let's stop there. Huh? Let's, let's stop there. So we're going to research it. We're going to look at it. We're going to pray over it. We're going to fast over it. And you're going to come back next Wednesday. And join us, and we're going to dive in it. Ask your questions. Visit us again. I ask you to go back and visit it on the pastor's desk on uh, Tuesdays um, so we can address this a little bit more so that we won't get lost in the scriptures. I'm going to ask you to revisit them. Go back and read over it yourself. Go back and pray. And ask God if I'm a false prophet. Ask him. If you believe there is a God, ask him. Are you scared? I'm asking you to ask him. 
So I'm asking you to join us next week at 1140 Benson Road, Garner, North Carolina. Visit us here on uh, uh, Facebook Live and allow the word of God to be richly in your life. In Jesus' name.